Ladies and gentlemen, welcome in the new year to our not anymore Matterhorn interview, but now von Gryards interview. There is Egon von Gryards, obviously. Great to see you, Egon. Before we start, what's behind the name change? Well, a late uh, Happy New Year to you, Jan. Uh, well, you know that we've been, we're a company uh, has been going for about just uh, under 25 years. And, and we, we've had well, three names, really. We had Matter on Asset Management and we had Gold Switzerland. And, and then, but, but if you search on the internet, the most well known of the three is my name in English, von Greers or, or, or von Greers, like in, in Swiss German, we say Greers rather than Greers. But anyway, uh, the, the, um, so you know, it was a natural change. And, and it also changed that indicated that we are here for the long term, you know, hopefully as long as gold exists, but who knows, <laughs> I won't be there then, but, but you know, it's, it's, it'll be nice to look five, five, 5,000 years ahead. But nevertheless, uh, you know, we wanted to indicate that the shareholders and the family that we're, there, we're here for the long term. Uh, and, uh, you know, the fact that I'm slightly older doesn't change anything because we have the most superb management team and uh, partners and, and executives um, that uh, will continue in the, exactly the same spirit. And this spirit is, you know, we also wanted to indicate that this, this is based on Swiss traditions. So, so, you know, sense of freedom, rule of law, property rights, and treating people with honesty and respect. You know, these are all the principles we subscribe to and the principles that are now rejected by most governments around the world. Um, and those values are so important. And this is, uh, you know, this, this is what we believe in and this is what our clients also believe in. Uh, and this is a strong indication that we will be around for a long time, hopefully. So, uh, so that's the, the reason uh, for the change, yeah. Thanks for the explanation, Egon. Let's go through our program today. First, how does it look now? The Dow Jones and the S&P obviously made a new high, Dow Jones above 38,000. But let's have a look at the Schiller PE. This is, for me, a good indication that the markets are still overvalued. Here we have it, Egon. There is a mean, the lower range and the upper range. And as we see it here clearly, the stock valuation is still in the red area. So we are here for now an extended period of time. In fact, more or less since the year 2000. It seems to me that the new paradigm that they once told us would be now is still here and people still believe in this ever increasing stock market, right? But with the circumstances around us, I would be very careful to trust the, the Powell Greenspan put. Well, what was interesting with this chart, Jan, is also obviously the, the overvaluation was very strong in 2000. Um, and then we had a big dip to, to 2009 uh, and now it's tried to test that again, that strong valuation, but that failed. So the trend is now down that that test what we saw 2021, I think it was uh, the peak that uh, you're showing there uh, to the right, uh, the right peak there. Yeah. So that was a failed test. It uh, didn't meet, reach the highs and now we're in a downtrend and, and this is going to go to the low areas here, of course. Uh, well, below the the yellow the yellow field there, I think. Yeah. So so the trend is down, and and the, the, this is a massive overvaluation. And also, if we measure the stocks against the GDP, we are also still in highly overvalued territory. Look at this; it dates back until 1970 or so, and 176 percent and assume the GDP, which I would expect once is shrinking. Wow, this has to come down. Yes, I mean, this is Warren Buffett's favorite indicator. Um, and, uh, you know, we are 175% uh, above GDP here. Uh, and the what is interesting, of course, really the, the norm is, is the lower um, end of that uh, dark blue field there. So that we saw in the 70s and the early 80s. So that's really where the, it will go back at least, which is to, to the 50 level or below. I would guess that it would go below that also. We would shoot, shoot below the 50 probably 
down to to below even the the thirty percent level of GDP. That's the way that that the world is head, heading, and that's what happens if when the bubble bursts, which we will see in the next few years. And one reason, Egon, why the stock market is still so elevated were those hopes in soon rate cuts by the Federal Reserve. Okay, they are playing with the news, but lately they were a bit cautious. It might take longer because the inflation is picking up again. So they simply play the market to, to, to keep the stock markets up. You know my view about inflation. I mean, inflation has come down temporarily. It's much higher than they're showing, of course, always is. They always uh, cheat with the figures um, and adjust them. Uh, but but the um, this dip that we've seen in inflation now is not going to last. Um, interest rates are on their way up. Um, inflation rates are on the way up. Commodity prices are going to go up dramatically. Um, and we will see much higher inflation again, which the world, of course, cannot cope with. Um, uh, and that will create massive problems, uh, uh, not not just for, for US, but for all around the world also, and of course, for developing countries. So, so this is um, this is going to hit the world at a time when they can't afford higher rates and higher inflation. But it will happen anyway because of market circumstances, in my view. Yes, I think so. And there is one force that is now already against the higher stock valuations, but they don't care. It worked nevertheless. And this is the tightening of the Fed balance sheet. And this is still continuing, although it looks like that will turn. Here is the graphic, Egon, and if we go to one year, we see already that it might turn. Who knows? But this is something that under normal circumstances is not positive for stock markets. Do you think that this is on the way up again? Yeah, of course it is. Uh, you know, the, the US is making uh, massive deficits. You know, we've gone from a, well, two, uh, one, one trillion Fed balance sheet in 2006, uh, uh, seven, eight, and then and then from from nine it started going up. You know, so think about it, one trillion, and we've been up to almost nine, and now we're down a bit under eight. Um, the the financing requirements of the U.S. government and the deficits will will go up faster every year now. And I mean, you know, we saw the one trillion deficit last year, um, and I think it'll be much higher this year, probably a couple of trillion at least, maybe more. And then you have the interest also on the debt, which is going up uh, exponentially. Um, and of course, the Fed has to refinance a major part of their balance sheet, about $8 trillion, um, in the short to medium term, and that they can't afford either. So there'll be massive issuance of, of, of um, debt by the Fed. Um, and remember, there is no buyer of this debt. And that's the, the critical point here. Um, you know, before, before they froze Russian assets, um, uh, and which was the most stupid thing they could ever have done. Uh, it, it actually then it was possible to sell their debt abroad to other uh, other countries, other central banks, etc. Not anymore. Now nobody wants to touch U.S. debt because who the hell wants to to buy um, an investment or a security that can be confiscated uh, by the government issuing it, namely the United States. So the only bar now U.S. debt is the U.S. itself, i.e. the U.S. government, the, the Fed. Um, and therefore, you know, there will, uh, since there's no demand, you know, interest rates will have to go up uh, be, because they have, they have to pay up. And, and the, so they issue the debt themselves and they will buy the debt themselves. I mean, that's a banana republic if you ever see one, Jan. And that's a recipe for disaster. And that's what we're going to see in the next few years, sadly. Absolutely, Egon, I agree. So the interest will go up. But on the other hand, the people or the companies and the consumers, they will cry for lower interest rates and the Fed still has some room left. Let's have a look at the sales of existing homes and then the foreclosures. Here, the sales of existing homes, they have a multi-year low. So the market is freezing. And if we look at the foreclosures, they are still low. But picking up, and if we go, that goes back to 2005, if this once turned, then it goes to one direction for a number of years. So I would expect the foreclosures to really increase here. And this, what we just said, puts pressure on the Fed to lower the interest rates. 
Yeah, so that, that's the problem they have. You know, the economy will be weak, uh, so they need to lower rates. Um, and as you said here, there will be defaults, defaults in 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 in, uh, in the mortgage market, both uh, both uh, both domestic mortgages and, and uh, commercial mortgages. You know, the office buildings, etc. That's a massive disaster uh, now in the U.S. Uh, and there are going to be major losses, major bank losses here, and. So we will have another bank crisis coming very soon. Um, so there's a pressure to lower the rates at, at the same time, as I said, because of the fact that that inflation will continue high and the U.S. can't, can't nobody will lend the money there to the U.S. government. They will have problem uh, raising money and that will put upward pressure on rates. So it's, an, it's a very difficult situation. And it can only end in, in in major problems for the United States economy, both but both the, the government itself and, and the financial world, banking world, etc. Which brings us to gold, Egon. We see here in all major currencies we have a superior performance since the year 2000, with few exceptions here. For instance, 2013. So that is the asset, the place to be, and a well hidden secret. But even though they are trying to manipulate the market, and I'm sure they do, they cannot prevent gold from rising. Now, this chart is, of course, fascinating. So this is uh, uh, from, from the beginning of this century. And if we look at just the bottom uh, line there, the compound annual growth rate of, of gold, and you see in all currencies, it's, it is between uh, 8 and 10% in all currencies. So grow, uh, gold has grown faster than any other major asset uh, in the last uh, 24 or 23 plus years. Uh, and nobody owns gold and still gold is up by that amount uh, on an annual basis and, and on a total basis. That means when demand really starts for gold, you know, there will not be enough supply to satisfy the new demand coming. And we will see much faster movement in the gold price than we've seen in the last 25 years. That's absolutely guaranteed, Jan. And that brings us, Egon, to the great deception. Why is this possible? Because the focus of the majority of the investors is clearly on the stock market. And as we said, or as we saw at the beginning, the Dow Jones at 38,000, S&P, technology stocks, people focus on this and on Bitcoin, for instance, but nevertheless... We have the Dow Jones gold ratio, and this is going down and flat since over 20 years. Here it is, Egon, and the peak was reached in 1999. And since then, gold showed a better performance than the Dow Jones. There is no new high. And we would expect, if we go in the past, that the prices or that this ratio breaks down. We expect it to meet at one or even less. But this, as I discussed it with Uwe Bergold and in my own top news, this flat in the Dow Gold ratio is a clear indication for a market manipulation. What do you think? Yes, uh, you know, whatever whatever the reason is, we have to live with the market as it is. And, and uh you know, it's well. The BIS themselves admit to the Bank of International Settlement in Basel admit that they have to intervene in the gold market at various points, and we can see that also. But you know, we we're, we are what we are. The market is is there, but they're not going to be able um, to maintain uh, this type of manipulation if that's what they're doing, uh, because. As you clearly say, that I mean, that consolidation we've seen now, we are ready for the next move down. And that next move down is going to be at least a one-for-one -one ratio. And if we, I have another long-term chart that points to, a, a, to a, the, that, that kind, kind of trend also. So, you know, one-for-one one we had in 1980, gold was $850 uh, in January 1980. And the Dow was $850. That's the one for one. So that's what we're going to see that again. Now it's 18, 18 to one, uh, the, the Dow gold ratio. And you can imagine if it goes down to, to one, one for one, I mean, that's down over 90%. And I would expect that to happen. Now. Whether it takes you know, a few years or five years or longer, it doesn't matter. That's going to be the trend. And that's what the wise investor will now protect himself against 
i.e. take out your, your uh, stocks uh, and protect yourself uh, in gold. Sadly, no one will do that. And, and people will only start thinking about gold when gold has gone up a lot and the stock market has gone down. And then a lot of people will say, oh, now it's too, gold is too expensive and the stocks are too low. So I'm going to sit on the stocks. So many people will just follow this ratio all the way down without having taken the appropriate steps. It's now, it's now that investors have to uh, actually adjust their portfolios because we're going to see the biggest wealth transformation in history on uh, with all the bubble assets coming off um, and all the commodity, especially commodity assets uh, going up dramatically, gold, silver, uh, gold, silver uh, stocks, etc. So that's going to be a major uh, adjustment that will uh, be cre create panic for the uh, average investor who is in the stock market, sadly. We are here, Egon, for that reason to make the people taking precautions right on time and not when it's too late and when the masses want to run through the bottleneck. It's now time to take precautions, not putting everything into gold. We have the discussion, if you look at silver, that is a different topic and we discussed it also for wealth preservation. Gold is more appropriate, clearly. But if the majority realizes it will be too late, so take your precautions now. And as Uwe Bergold also said, and as the article that you will find in the description box shows, anomalies like this flat Dow gold ratio, they will disappear. And if they disappear, it usually happens very quickly. Final word, Egon? Final word is that, you know, we have talked about, for, you know, I want to add, we've talked about the US and, and you know, the West a bit, but... You know, the, the as we know, the move is going from from west to east with the BRIC countries, etc., uh, and the commodity countries. Uh, but there is another problem area also which we haven't talked about so much. Maybe we can another time, which is China. China has a massive, massive debt bubble, Jan, um, and they will be part of this um, collapse in, in debt markets uh, coming in, in the next few years, also. Uh, so China will suffer dramatically and that will have a major effect on world economy and world trade because they are so important. You know, they have uh, on, on a PPP, on a parity purchasing power there, man, they're the biggest GDP country in the world, bigger than the US. But, but even if on, on normal terms, is their second. And if they're going to suffer in addition to the US, and they will do, and of course, China exports a lot of products to, to the West, um, but they they have a debt bubble mainly be, uh, based on again speculation and property speculation. So that will be part of the decline that we will see. So it's not just not just the West, but also China. The, the advantage China has that they can that their market is domestic, so they don't need to borrow from abroad. Um, uh, so they can organize it better within the country. Nevertheless, it'll be part of of the decline of, of the world economy. Well, Jan, I mean, this obviously so added another element here, <laughs> and you know we're pointing to the risks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't know exactly when the market is going to uh, crash, which we believe they're going to, maybe is imminent. Doesn't matter. Investors have to get their protection now. That's the only thing that counts before anything happens, because when it starts, it'll be too late. No one's going to adjust their portfolios then because they're so scared. Uh, so now, you know, now is the chance to actually make um, a, a switch to, to wealth preservation assets. And that's going to be a switch of a lifetime and, and, and the uh, opportunity to not just protect your wealth, but to uh, enhance your wealth dramatically in, in the next few years. So that's what we wish that investors will do for their own sake, not for our sake, uh, you know, not because we're in the gold business, but, but for, for, for investors on, on the whole, uh, you know, that's what they should do to survive the coming period here. So we wish them luck uh, and uh, you know, we'll be there to help them and support them. Absolutely, Egon. This is an advice for investors all over the world. Thanks for the interview this month. I wish you, well, a great rest of the week and then we talk next month or in two months. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Jan. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.